I strongly believe animal abuse should be punishable by death. Everybody knows that it's wrong. You either just don't care or you don't want to confront the fact that your actions aren't actually aligning with what you say you believe in. What is it that I can say that you stop exploiting animals today and I'll say it? Mm, absolutely nothing. Yeah, it is not my fault the animals are in this position. Well, if you support this system, it is your fault. And this is why I think we should end this conversation. What's your name? My name is Thea. Nice to meet you, Thea. I'm Chip. Hi, Chip. Nice to meet you. You want to try it too? Sure. Uh, what's your name? Jade. Jade, nice to meet you. I'm Chip. Hi, Chip. Nice to meet you. Uh, you also want to try it? Shelly. 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 Nice I'm Chip. Okay. Uh, what do you think about this? No. No? <laughs> Why would it be legal? You read it very fast, by the way, props to you. Um, so you're saying animal abuse shouldn't be legal? No. Why not? I guess it already is, no? Why, why shouldn't it be legal? Yeah. Well, I have a dog, so I wouldn't want her to be abused. But I suppose in many places it's legal already. So. Yeah. What do you think? I strongly believe animal abuse should be punishable by death. Okay, so, <laughs> that's pretty strict. I yeah. don't actually think it should be legal. Okay, what do you think, Shelly? Uh, it should not be legal. It animal abuse legal. should not be legal. Okay, so you all agree that abusing dogs or cats should be illegal. Mm -hmm. Can I ask why? They Okay, my feeling is they are beings and they have rights and they should be protected and because they don't have their own, um, I guess you could say freedom, they should be taken care of even better yeah. than... Um, they're like babies. Yeah, they're That's the most point. vulnerable yeah. species, I feel like. Also, we domesticate cats and dogs, so they don't have their own. the right, I guess, direction as to like how to live on their own. And so they are the most vulnerable. They're not like prey. Okay. I mean, they are prey. So, so you agree that cats or dogs should not be abused? Mm -hmm. What about cows, chickens, pigs? You touched upon that. Yeah, but I guess it's hypocritical, right? Because if you eat animals, then That's you still contribute to the abuse of animals. Exactly, right? So what is keeping you from not abusing animals if you're so opposed to it? If you say that it should be punishable by death, that means you shouldn't be consuming animal products. And I think it's, you know... Just put the sign down. Especially it's like a cultural thing too. I think in certain cultures like a lot of traditional cuisines involve animals. So I don't know. I've been vegan before but it was quite difficult. Especially if you like start to live like a faster lifestyle. We're from the United States. It's a bit harder there I think. Okay. I try to go as vegan as much as possible. Oh, okay. That's good. It's so, not always possible, particularly when you eat out. How do you feel? Getting better. Because you were the one who said that you should be punishable by that. Um, my opinions are kind of mixed. Uh, my mom is Buddhist, so I grew up a lot vegetarian. So we can eat a plant-based diet. It's not too hard. And so I know there is a life that you can live with it. But also, we're from the States, and I feel like meat is really a big part. I mean, there are a lot of vegan options, I feel like. But for the most part, like, I am Vietnamese, and a lot of our cuisines are half meat. Um... So I guess there is like a battle. I guess it's very hypocritical of me to say that, I guess. So so I, I heard a bit of a cultural, like a lot of you have just said it's cultural. Uh, and I mean, I'll dive into that. But before we do that, like, I'm curious, what do you think veganism is? Because you mentioned that. What do you think a, a person who is vegan is? Uh, I mean, it just depends. I know some people are vegan for their health and some people are vegan for their morals. But... I don't think it's a bad thing. I think if you can be vegan, then that's great. What do you think a vegan is? What do I think a vegan is? Yeah. Um, so a vegan is you have a choice between um, health, but more morals. And um, the people that I know that are very vegan haven't eaten any um, animal product in a very long time and really choose to support um, 
and really, really don't touch any animal product. Okay, okay. And what, what, what about you? Um, for me, I think a vegan, for the most part, I think there's like a derogatory news nuance when it comes to veganism you know when you think of someone who is vegan you think of someone who like pushes that ideal onto other people who like, strongly believes like anybody who eats meat is in the wrong um and i think a lot of vegans especially if we see it on social media or just like you come across somebody their morals are very very strong so sometimes when i hear people are vegan i sometimes not necessarily shun them away but I think there's more of like it feels almost dystopian in a way because you don't feel like they think that they're in line with you because you eat meat so in terms of vegan I think it really is a lifestyle like it's a whole personality that you take upon yourself and it's not just oh I don't eat meat okay so I'll ask you one, just, just to make things clear, clearer, what do you think a feminist is? Um, I guess feminism is about gender equality, but then there's also kind of the thing of gender fairness. So, like with animals, right, they can't take care of themselves. So it's not about, like, making animals equal to you. Because if they are equal, they can't really be. It's the same thing with women. Um, and I think, it, I don't know how it is here. Um, but in America, you know, women aren't treated that well, but it is better compared to other places, but still there's a long way to go. But I think the most important thing is stressing gender fairness and non-equality because men and women can't be equal. Yeah, so equal rights for, and opportunities for women. Yeah. Men, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so, so to bring it back to veganism, veganism is exactly like feminism. Right. It's just about the animals. It, it means uh, veganism is not a diet. It's not a lifestyle. I mean, it accompanies with a lifestyle, but the reality of it is just the idea of opposing the exploitation, abuse, and slaughter of animals because we think, not that they're equal to us necessarily, like right. I, I don't believe that you are equal to me or that, not because you're a woman, but like just because you're a stranger to me, right? So, But rather because... Um, you, I believe that you yourself value your life mm -hmm. probably just as much as I myself value my life and probably just as much as any other animal values their own life, right? And their own experience throughout that life. Right. So in that sense, when we consume animal products, we inherently pay for a system that exploits them, abuses them, and eventually slaughters them. Mm -hmm. So being vegan just means we're opposing all of that. And of course, that means following through with it, right? Because if we just say we oppose the idea of animal abuse, but then we wholeheartedly go to the store and pay for animals to be abused, then that means we're just doing lip service, right? It's just like saying, I'm a feminist, but then going home and beating my wife because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just saying I'm a feminist, but I don't actually believe in it, right? right? So I can understand that it can seem like we're pushing our beliefs onto people when we're uh, sitting on the street like what I'm doing now and talking to people, but the reality is uh, a lot of people um, have been conditioned, like myself included, I've been bought, brought, uh, I, I've been bought up yeah. brought up sorry um, believing that consuming animals it's okay that these animals are they don't really suffer or that we don't have to think about it too much but the reality is there's no difference between cows chickens pigs and the dogs or cats which we already know have a personality which we already can see that they're they, they have their own individuality and they want to live and they don't want to die and they suffer and all of this all of these animals feel the same way so right. How do you feel that you want to proceed going forward with this? Like, um, I understand there's a couple of difficulties and we can touch upon those, but uh, do you think any of those justifications justify treating animals or exploiting them for something that we can, like, even if it's a little bit harder, we can do it without, right? Be right. No, I mean, there isn't actually any justification, especially now because it's accessible. I think if it's like a justification that you're making, it's really just an excuse. But I think everybody knows that it's wrong. You either just don't care or you don't want to confront the fact that your actions aren't actually aligning with what you say you believe in. Like me, you know, I eat animals. I would also say for us, it is also a privilege to choose between being vegan and being not because yeah. there are a lot of other people in the world who just also don't have that option 
And in those instances, I can't speak for them and their own experiences. But coming from a place where vegan is an option and we can decide, you know, even in the next day that we can be, it is a really big privilege that not many people have. So I think there is also like a very big discourse on that where, yes, I think morally we know it's wrong because we've been taught and educated, you know, through the science, like this is not humane, but there are other people who don't get that same privilege and same education. So um, I would say this conversation opens up my eyes a lot, but in terms of other people, I can't speak on it generally. I agree. Like that, that's the thing, right? Like um, to, to give a quick response to like, it's, it's not, it's not about, I agree there's maybe places on earth where it's more difficult to be vegan, right? But when we have the opportunity to be vegan, when we have the opportunity to have a plant-based diet, to not oppress animals, and it's, maybe it's a little bit harder for us, maybe in some cases because we, we, we will trade off a little bit of the cost for convenience or one or the other, right? Because you can, you can also have it low cost, but maybe it's a little bit more inconvenient, but then you can put more money into it and it's a bit more convenient, like usual, like a, any other usual food or diet that you make. But we that because we have this privilege, as you mentioned it, I believe that, that that means we have even more of an obligation to do it because when we do this, then uh, the more people that who have this privilege do it, the more it becomes available for people who don't have this option. So it's more difficult for because, you know, we live in a capitalistic society, it's supply and demand. So if we demand one product, they will supply it. If we demand the other product, they will supply it, right? So even more a responsibility for product for vegan products to go down in price. Although most of the products in the sewer store are actually vegan and they're actually the cheapest, like rice, pasta, lentils, beans. But even the plant-based meats or plant-based cheeses, all of this, the only way that they can down, go down in price is more people like us that they make the choices, right? So what I really, so what I personally do is really support the companies that are doing plant-based alternatives and making them uh, acceptable, viable, and tasteable by people who are normally used to eating meat. So, for instance. Um, we're from California, so there's much more vegan alternatives yeah. and a lot more technology. So, like, um, there's a company, a woman-owned company, that started plant-based cheese, and it's actually pretty good. Nice. Like, the, the better options to make it tasteable and acceptable, because I've eaten vegan for a long time, and some of it is really not good, right? Uh, alternative just like, like the meat-based meat products right some right. of them are good some of them are not good it's right the same so the more advancement they make to making them acceptable and good um you know we see that more and more in the stores in the united states it's called impossible and they have sausages burgers chicken yeah, and then a lot of them like the chicken nuggets are really like equally as good so a lot of people eat them now yeah um so i think just more like the more i mean in vegans buy them to try to support those companies yes. um, and then getting other people to, to okay buy them. so that's that's one part of it but the most important part of it is recognizing that um, it, it is actually asking ourselves what what label do we want to address ourselves as right because uh, in this situation when we buy an animal product we are abusing an animal so we would, would add, easily add ourselves the label of animal abuser because that's what we are when we do this but then if we don't do it we could add ourselves the label of vegan or just not use the label vegan at all at all if you have a problem with the label it doesn't matter but the most important part is that we don't abuse animals because if we were in their shoes we wouldn't want anybody to be on this other side and claiming all sorts of reasons, especially when they can easily choose for us not to be exploited. We, we can't. We, we we can't say, oh, mm, it's okay. They have a. It's difficult for them to try, or it's inconvenient for them to try. Right? Like if we were in their shoes, we would want somebody to say, no, just stop it. Just just stop it all. Right? So so I'm I'm going to bring it back because when we talk about societies, it's very easy. But I'm going to bring it back to each of us individually. Do you think that individually you have a responsibility to to change and to not oppress animals? Individually, yes, but it is not my job to tell other people how to act, what they think, and what is a good reason. Because it's I know I have a larger privilege than a lot of people and it's never in my intentions to ever tell someone to tell to do or act upon anything because my morals or ethics ethics are different than anyone else okay How, what do you think 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a personal choice. Um, I do talk to people and just say what I'm doing, but I agree that you can't really push it on anyone else. But it's it's good to say why you're doing things or why you've chosen yeah, things. Yeah, we, we work through things as, as we discuss them. Right? What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's like... I can't judge someone for their choices because you don't know the situations they're in. I mean, like we said, eating vegan is a privilege. Not everyone has access to that privilege. So I disagree with that, by the way, but I'll just, I'll just go along with it. Yeah, well, I mean, in certain places, like... I guess it's, I don't know if it's common here, but in the U.S. we have a lot of food deserts. Yeah. Where, like, people living in poverty, they don't have access to fresh grocery stores, and, like, the closest thing around is, like, a fast food restaurant. But that's, like, a whole, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. issue. But, yeah, so, I mean, I think in some places it is a privilege, but... I truly believe it is a privilege. Yeah. I yes. think everyone should do the best they can. Yeah. I mean, the poorest countries in the world, they eat animal products very rarely not like developed yes. countries right so yeah. actually the cheapest foods you can buy are plant-based products rice yeah. beans lentils all of this and you can survive and thrive on them and if there's any vitamin deficiencies you can easily supplement and i've been to us i understand the the reason why meat and animal products are so cheap in the us it's because they're subsidized by the government yeah that's the thing the, right the thing that i really the main thing is that the U.S. and the world has been brainwashed that you need so much protein and you need so much plant protein. Oh, sorry. Animal protein. Animal protein. protein. Yeah. And that's a brainwash. That's the thing that um, everyone believes that you need like so much protein and you need to get it from meat. It's the best source. And that's the part and that's pushed by the, the meat it is. providers. Yeah. And... When you go to other countries, you realize, like you said, you can live without it, and mm. many people can live fine, and you're actually healthier without it. So that's yeah. the thing. We were just in London, and almost every restaurant had vegan options, and they had a bunch Thank of you. vegan options. And it seems like, and my friends were telling me, they're like, it's much easier to be a vegan in Europe. And like when you're in school in the because U.S., like they meat. teach you in school that you do need to have like most of your plates should be meat at right. meal time. At least like they'll show you like a diagram, and then half of your plate is filled with meat. But and nowadays, with that pyramid is different now. Yeah. Um, so, so just to put a little bit of things into perspective, because a lot of people don't realize it. What do you know about the dairy industry, for example? Just, just, to, just to. I want you to at least leave knowing this one thing that because a lot of people don't know about it too much. You don't need dairy. You, you don't, don't need, need dairy. You don't need animal-based dairy. You can do oat. Um, you could do soya, and you can do almond. But well, in the no U.S. Yeah. yeah. But what do you know about the industry? What do you think the industry does to animals? That's what. Because I mean, I'm here speaking on their behalf. Like artificially inseminate them. There you go. So the yeah, so they, well, they that. actually drive up the production of milk by keeping them uh, no, kind of like pregnant stressed. all the time. Something. Yeah. It's like um, yeah. it's like so they're not normally they don't normally produce milk like that. They have to. I won't say it's hormones, but they do something to make them produce. One that amount of milk and milk all the time. They selectively breed them. So let me explain exactly. Because so first of all, yeah, you touched upon it. Cows get forcefully impregnated. Um, they somebody literally puts their hands in their anus, holds their cervix, and injects bull semen. Somebody has to jerk off a bull for that to happen. And this is common standard, common practice standard all the way across the board, including small farms, large farms, local farms, whatever you want to call them. It happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I come from Romania and. Even my grandparents did this kind of stuff. So, and they, they had one cow in their yard. So I, I know what that, what that's about. Um, after nine months, when the baby is born, um, they get separated from their parents because the milk has to go for human consumption. So, uh, some if their baby is a male, they never see their mothers again. They they get to, they go to a slaughterhouse either the for their first day of life or within a week to up to one year. They don't never live longer than one year. If the baby is a female, um, they Indeed, you mean because of the dairy farm? Yeah, exactly. But if it weren't, they would keep it and grow it and eat it? Kind of, no, I'll show you. I'll have a graph right with me. But like, uh, let me just finish with this though. So, so females get forcefully impregnated year over year, just like their mothers. 
for six years, maybe eight years, depending on the farm, depending on the breed. And when they can no longer be impregnated with yeast, that means uh, one year they, because they always impregnate them during the mating season. And if they don't get pregnant during then, then they get sent to a slaughterhouse because it's, uh, it would be too costly to them to keep them alive for another year while they don't produce enough milk, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is the kind of system that we're, when we're buying dairy products, for example, this is the kind of system that we're supporting. We're, we're telling the farmers, do more of this so that I can get my milk, so that I can get my cheese, so that I can get my, I don't know, cookies and, made with milk. And Europe has so much more cheese than in the U.S. They do, yeah. So, so cheese and all of they these... less meat, but a lot of cheese. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, it's, it's actually very... Cheap too. It's very prevalent here that uh, I will meet a lot of vegetarians, and uh, vegetarians also get very defensive because they think they're doing enough, but the reality is for the animals, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And as for the meat, uh, they, uh, it's true sometimes they, they remain with their mothers, but not always. A lot of the times they don't. Uh, a lot of the meat is coming from the dairy industry. A lot of, like, the dairy industry is the meat industry and is the leather industry because it's also about leather. It's about all of these products, right? And um, in the meat industry, though, they kill them way younger, way, way younger. And cows can live up to, I forgot to mention, they can live up to 20, 25 years. So they don't live even like a third of their life. That's, that's literally... Um, and let me just show you a little bit because... I have a little graph here to show kind of the, the living, uh, just how much animals are being, uh, I have a lot of stuff here. This is the lifespan of animals. So uh, pigs are killed at six months and they're usually gassed. They're put in gas chambers, pigs. Uh, bulls, the, the one that are, that, use, that are used for artificial insemination, they're left alive for 12 to 18 months. Um, the <laughs> fattening calf, the ones that we talked about, they're kept up to four, four or five months, depending on the breed again. And uh, dairy cows, four and a half years. I guess it's an average, I don't know, like the, the statistic. Uh, egg laying chickens for 18 months, afterwards when they can no longer produce enough eggs. And by the way, by enough eggs, I've been to a sanctuary. It's not if they don't produce eggs every day. So if they produce five eggs per, per week, that means they go to a slaughterhouse because they don't produce enough eggs. Um, Broiler chickens, which are the ones for meat, live up to seven weeks. And male baby chicks who are uh, who don't produce any eggs, they get uh, macerated, they get blended up alive on their first day of life. That's that's very common standard practice. So, seeing this kind of stuff, I, I won't keep you too long. But do you? What do you think you want to do? Do you want to keep participating in this violence towards animals? Do you want to? I think as women, there's a lot more that we have to deal with. Um, I think even here in the Netherlands, that also is an issue. I think in terms of veganism, again, like I mentioned in the, the very beginning, it's really hard. We can eat a plant-based diet. It's not too hard. It's not too hard. Because there are a lot of reasons as to why a lot of people can't go. And like for us, yes, we do have... Right. For me, it is a privilege. But um, I think, again, like I feel like the yes, I like the fact that you have the graphic images to show because it is something that we don't see. It is a gray area that a lot of meat eaters do not see. But at the same time, it does feel kind of forceful. Um, in a way where if you're trying to have a topic, I think there is a better way to go about it in terms, and I'm sure What is it that I can say that you stop exploiting animals today and I'll say it? Mm, absolutely nothing. So then it doesn't really matter how I say it, does it? It, it only matters that you want to make this choice or not. The reality is we have the power. You can you can choose to look at me as the bad person and find... I don't look I don't, at you I as a bad person, it. but how you're coming across makes it seem like I'm the bad person, which is why... Well, you oppose animal abuse and yet you actively pay for it. That is a, a, a clear... Uh, contradiction in your values. I'm not here to impose my values. According to your own values, you say you oppose animal. If, the, if I see people when I show that and they say they're okay with animal abuse, there's not, I don't continue with the experiment with them because I, there's nothing I can tell them. If they're okay with abusing animals, I, there's nothing I can do going forward, right? But most people are opposed the animal, the idea of animal abuse. And if you oppose the idea of animal abuse, then it seems to me like you shouldn't be supporting it. Correct.
right? That's all it is. It's not me imposing my ideas. It's nothing. It's just me trying to tell you that you don't have to do it, that we can live in a better society. We can, you, you, you can have a better life, really, by aligning your actions with your own morals, not mine. And I'll think about it. Okay. Um, While you think about it, please be aware that a lot of animals will be exploited, abused, and slaughtered on your behalf and because of you. A lot of women in the world, around the world, are also being exploited and slaughtered right But now, too. But you don't too. support that with her money, do you? With this one, you actively support it. All those women get the, uh, uh, abused. Like, there's obviously awful, thing happen, awful things happening in this world. I'm not saying there aren't. But we don't, I don't go around and ignore them and say, I'll just, I'll just give money for those people to, do, to, for that to happen. It's not my fault that they're in that situation. Right. Whereas these animals, it is our fault that they're in this situation. We have it a direct is not my fault the animals are in this position. Well, if you support this system, it is your fault. And this is why I think we should end this conversation. I mean, nothing I can say. What do you, how do you feel about it? Um, I already, um, when I'm at home, pretty much go 100% vegan on my own cooking, uh, including my husband. When I'm out, then that's a little harder. Um, but I know what choices I'm making. Um, and I, you know, have actually had discussions with people and they actually have gone to less food. Yeah. Uh, and they are where not so much, I, I think for some people, not so much for them, not so much about the moral, but at least the health. So, you know, one or the other. Um, but um, at least in the United States, there's more information. It's hard to disseminate information and it's hard to, um, I won't say it is hard to convince people. Yeah. But I mean, the more information, I think, so people can make their own choices and the more options, I think is, is the... I provided you with the information, right? Like, I, I just want you to know that you don't have to be part of the system. You right. can choose otherwise. Uh, and and that you are responsible for it. It's yeah. it's like like I know it's hard to hear, but there's no way of me like I cannot I, I cannot try and cuddle you for something that is it it is really awful because in their position it's just because we don't see it it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And if you look at it from their position, they 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 they, they go through a lot worse than saying it's difficult for me or anything like that. Like literally having their throat cut, having their baby stolen, having their babies killed. All of this is standard practice across the board. I, I think, for instance, for us in the United States, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on, pushback against big business, which includes oil, food. So it will happen, probably not as fast as some people want, but it will happen. It's happening. Um, and there's a lot that doesn't get said because of the money part of it. Um, of why it's really big business that's controlling it. Yeah. Um, but it will, as more and more people uncover, uh, people are becoming are realizing. What do you feel you want to do about? Um, I think I'll do my best. I think uh, you're doing a good thing by standing out here and educating people, and that's how changes happen by people reaching out. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I think we need to run now. Just, but let me just give you a card so before you go, okay? Just, just one card. Um, just, I'm just going to ask you one thing to watch. Uh, if you scan this code or go on this website and type in this code, mm -hmm. there's uh, this is a code that I created. There's a thing there called the most important speech you'll ever hear. I'm going to challenge your belief systems today so certain parts of the speech will be intense. Just give that a watch. It's a good speech. You won't see, there's not a lot of blood from time to time he shows yeah. something, but it's some, it's a guy from the US, an animal rights activist like myself, mm -hmm. and explaining all the stuff that happens in animal agriculture okay. and being as direct and as, 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 as good as necessary. So you know? There's a Netflix show, there's also more than a few Netflix shows, one's called You Are What You Eat. Oh, I know You Are What You Eat, yeah, and with it, the Oxford you, study, yeah. And it comes not just from, and there's another one too, um, I forget what it's called, but um, that one is about, it's a Stanford, California study. So I didn't meet you over there. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. I'll yeah, be you over you. there in a second. It's a Stanford, California study, and what they do is they take identical twins, about 60, 70 of them, 
and they did a study over just eight weeks yeah. about when um, one of the twins of each pair went vegan, 100% vegan, and then the other one. I've seen that one. That's really good. That yeah, one. yeah, it's really good. And yeah. so those, I like those programs because they come from health, but then during the show they talk a lot about the animal rights too. Yeah, and. Um, in the U.S., the animal rights is hard because there's such a predominance of beef production and I've beef, and and we're in California. We're not even in the beef country. Yeah. But health is one that will. It's a combination of the two that people will change their mind. And then there are a lot of people in the U.S. who don't even. I mean, they just eat really bad food, even if they know it's not healthy. That's another problem in the U.S. So I believe that uh, I agree with you that a lot of people do change their mind b because of health reasons and m way easier. But also people don't really maintain diets or health. That's why a lot of people don't go to the gym. So that's why I think it's very important that we address the issues of animals and uh, exploitation. It's very important because I feel like a lot of people do see animals as these innocent uh, beings who have to be protected, who we can't just abuse just because we can. Uh, and if they do try it and see that they can be healthy, then knowing that they're that they would be exploiting animals otherwise i think keeps them from never exploiting animals yeah. so that's why i try to talk more about animals and it's also because it's about the animals i don't really like you can be un unhealthy on a vegan diet i don't I, if you want to do that you do that I, i'm not here to telling you what diet or what to eat i'm just here telling you let's not exploit these innocent beings you know it's uh it's yeah up for their rights yeah i know it's it's definitely something i mean i've um been vegetarian and then now more vegan and i'm the only one in my family um, <laughs> okay i've convinced my husband so when we're on our own i don't buy meat i don't buy cheese i buy vegan cheese or cashew cheese or and then he's gotten to that and you know sometimes he has to eat he'll eat his own fish or chicken and then i have one son two sons who have gotten better. They eat a lot of tofu, you nice. know, because uh, they said tofu is really good. And then one of my sons is also very environmentally minded. So even like certain, you know, I mean, we it's actually, also better for the environment. Yeah. We actually look at like which milk we're drinking that's better for water preservation yeah. or what nuts we're eating or, you know, we're really trying to narrow it down. Um, and and they've eaten a lot less meat. I have one son who eats probably still more meat. Um, but, uh, and I have talked with, you know, friends by just telling them I don't eat meat. And they've seen me not eat meat for a while. And they were like really big meat eaters, like meat all the time. And then now they go, oh, yeah, okay, we're really trying to cut down on our meat. I mean, so they're, they're working on it. So I think just by... My talent, they know I don't eat meat, so they, when I go over, they have to have vegetarian options or, and by that, and it's probably been like 10 years, I mean, then they finally are coming around, but just by each person. In the United States, there's a big, um, very famous journalist called Ezra Klein, okay, and he's totally promotes vegan, so okay. he talks on his show about you know, not even eating eggs and using just eggs and how he can't eat anything. And he'll talk about it on his podcast. Oh, nice, nice. And then people, um, you know, gravitate towards that. So I think everyone just talking more about it and being more open, I think. Uh, but it is awfully slow. It I, is slow, but like... Um that's why I think it's very important because people they they get defensive very fast when they hear that something that they're doing is not good or something so yeah I mean even real. even even my old in my oldest son who's really really smart he goes well the best protein is from me and I do understand like chicken has a high amount of protein for the fat okay um, I think tofu is better though but I you know I just can't eat an animal I can't eat an animal. Um, fish a little bit. Fish but also feel pain and they have them. No, I know. So. But just animals for sure. And then, you know, so I pretty much try to just stay, you know, on my own diet. I only buy tofu. and But yeah, there's many people who, you know, I mean, meat's everywhere. So 
But I saw here there's more like, there's like vegan donor, which I was really happy about. I've never seen that in the yeah. United States. Um, Let me give you a map of Amsterdam with vegan places. You might like that. Uh, while you're here. These are some of, not all of them. These are some, okay. and they're categorized by health. And I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're really good too. Some like of them, the like the, the sushi bar. I think there's one here, and there's oh. another one in the West. So good. Yeah. So, so like, so like United States, it's almost impossible. I've never seen a vegan sushi bar. Like I, like I don't even like sushi. This in, is amazing. This even is though good. we're in the San Francisco Bay Area, it's there's vegan things, but not vegan sushi. But yeah. and vegan, there are vegan barbecue places, and then I got like I tried to get my family. Oh, we got to go here. It got really great reviews, and you know if you have an Impossible Burger and, and it's barbecue, you would you wouldn't know the difference. Uh, but it's still hard to get them. But okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a okay. good day. And keep in mind, it's not just about food. It's also leather, all these other stuff. Yeah, right? it's about the animals. That's no, why I keep I bringing it back to that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Have a good one. Thank you.